So, hi again, time for part 2 of the shader tutorial and uh, this time we will look into how to uh, send values into the shader. So with the things we did in the first video you can do some pretty nice stuff, you can change the colors, you can increase like the intensity of the of the colors and so on, but if you really wanna do some nice like animation effects and stuff then you want to be able to send in variables like a time variable or something else into the shader so that it uh, reacts according to time or where on the screen something is. So I'm gonna do that for this little character here. I'm gonna make him change color based on where I put him in the room like this. Uh, so let's do that. And I'm gonna actually make another shader. Uh, I'm just gonna copy this first one because it's gonna be similar but uh, I want a new one so uh, part one and part two are separate. Uh, so let's do Let's just do that, color pos. And again, just skip the vertex shader and we go into the fragment shader. So, uh, like I talked about in the last part, uh, these two varying are variables that this has come from here, the vertex shader. So now we are going to create, outside of this main function, we create a variable with the keyword uniform and you can think of this as like global or something like it's available in this entire shader and in any ah, never mind so I'm gonna do a uniform and float because we wanted this to be a value between a 0 and 1 and I'm gonna call it uh, X post and we don't have to give it a value because we're going to do that from game makers side so let's uh, for this color change we want it to be now it's just ones for everything and let's say we do this the red value is one times X post so that means that when I'm at the all the way to the right in the room, then the red value is going to be one, and the further down to the left I go, uh, it will remove the red color. So how do we do that? Let's go to the character and in the draw. Now I changed this shader, so let's change it to color and then there are two steps to this. First we need to identify here in the game maker code this is a completely separate program so we need to identify this one who this is the variable we want to set now inside this uh, inside this shader. So how do we identify it? <clears throat> then we do it like this. Make a temporary variable, call it just... Uh, let's not call it something confusing. So just P. Might be confusing, but this is not uh, similar. Uh, so P equals shader get uniform. So now we get one of these uniform variables and we need to specify what shader we're supposed to be looking in so we need to so we're looking in the, this shader color position and for the name we have decided this xpos and we're just gonna write that as a string which is I find it a bit ugly but I guess that's how it works and it works perfectly and once we have 
identify this and put it in this variable p. Now we can set it using shader set uh, shader set uniform. And then there are a bunch of uh, different ones. So f is what we're gonna use stands for float. You can also set f, an array of floats, integers, an array of integers, and then a matrix. An array of matrices, but let's not get into that. So now we just need a uniform. We're gonna set a float, and this is also because of this. So now we've actually used all of these three values. We've gotten a uniform with the name x position, and we're gonna set it. And we're gonna make sure that it's a float. So the uniform ID is now this p variable. And then the value, we're going to use the x position divided by room uh, width, because that will give us a value between 0 and 1. If we just use x, we would get, if the room is, well, it's 1280, we would get a number between 1 and, or 0 and 1280, which would be a lot of red using if you're just doing like this so we want a value between 0 and 1 that's true in a lot of cases but yeah we want a value between 0 and 1 for this case at least and that's actually it we have figured out what the variable is and then we set that variable to our desired value so, and then we use this value inside the shader to alter how much red we are uh, putting out. So let's close these and run. And uh, we'll see. Yay. So you can see there is no red here. It's the blue-green color. And as I move it along, it turns white because now we have all the colors. So in order to actually show this a little bit better, maybe we could remove these colors so it's completely black and then uh, it's completely black to the left and then completely red to the right. See, nice. Now let's expand this. So my second part of this is to instead of just adding the x position let's actually make a vec2 I will just call it pose pose for position and in character we're gonna have to change this pose we don't change this because this is just we get a uniform and this is a uniform and shader set uniform F. That's still the same, but if you notice here at the hint, or what it's called, it's at the help for the function, then you have uniform ID and then a value and then there's a, another comma and some dot dot dot. That means you can add more values if you want to. Now since this is a, uh, a vector 2, two values in it, we are supposed to send two values to it. So we have the x divided by room width, but let's also send y divided by room height. So now we have the complete position inside the room from 0 to 1 for x and from 0 to 1 for y. <coughs> and remember to change the name of this since I changed this name. <coughs> um, so that's that, and then inside this shader we also need to make sure then that we use pose.x because this is now uh, a vector, so if we just do pose it's gonna take both the x and the y, and I'm not sure if that's gonna work. If it is, it doesn't work, very predictable, so let's use pose.x. Uh, let's make the green dependable on this uh, 
uh, Y and the blue can be dependent on both equals X plus uh, oh and not a semicolon in the middle of the line we can keep it 0 0.5 so that it, when both of these are 1 this will be 1 and let's yeah the alpha we can keep so let's try this now black top left goes to red with a little bit of blue to the right and this should be green with a little bit of blue to when we go to the bottom yep and then it should be completely white uh, looking like it should to the bottom right uh, looks pretty good Now let's see, I should probably end this part 2 here because I want to keep this simple and there's lots of stuff more we could do in part 3 plus. <coughs> but I hope you understood this, let me go through it once more. So check if the shader, shader is compiled, this is what we talked about in part 1 and we set the shader. This is actually also important that you do this before you can't do it like this because these things will be confused. I actually discovered that the hard way yesterday by spending two or three hours <laughs> on another project where this stuff didn't work as I wanted them to. And then I realized that I put this too far down. So actually try to do this before you do any of the shader stuff. But you set the shader, you store, you get the, the variable inside the shader and store it to a variable and use this set uniform with this uh, variable as an argument. Then you draw whatever you want to draw and reset the shader. Inside the shader, skip the vertex for now. You put variables that you want to change, you put like this, uniform, and then whatever type they are, and you name them, and then you can use them inside the main. For this one that's a vector 2, you can just do x and y to find the different parts. Um, and that way you change the color. So. Yeah, I'm going to keep that short and let you experiment. You can do a lot of stuff with this, um, but I hope this helped and I look forward to seeing you in part three. Leave a like and thanks for watching.